Hey guys, welcome back to the Joe Silverback Show. Uh, as you can see, my beard's trimmed. Um, I'm back from the mountains. And uh, I had uh, an intense two weeks um, after 30 years of living in the same place. Um, I, I, uh, I had to leave. Um, I'm pretty excited about some of the new stuff that I continue to read and I have talked to you guys about Edward Wilson. Um, highly, highly recommend you read him, um, study him, listen to YouTube videos by him. The man is uh, a legend in the sociobiology and the um, biohereditary and uh, evolutionary hereditary um, uh, sciences. He's close to 90 years old. I don't think he's going to be around much longer. Um, I love to listen to, I've been reading him for 30 years uh, on and off. Um, it doesn't mean I agree with everything he says, but there's too much that he says that's um, worthy of our t attention. And as the model of the silverback is how is it done in nature? A primary biologist uh, who spent, you know, six decades intimately connected to studying how things are done in nature, meaning he was in the uh, rainforests, he was in the jungles, he was studying his, his primary uh, study was uh, uh, ants. <clears throat> Sounds kind of funny, but read him and you'll see how you know uh his his ability to draw links uh from what's what he's do, what he's uh, learning from his studies to uh, the social organization in ants to the social organization organization in um about 15 other uh animals species including uh, uh human beings so there's something that Wilson talks about called eusociality, um, eusocial, um, an organism that is designed for the betterment of the whole and not just for the individual. And uh, there's something that uh, he's discussing in Genesis about these eusocial uh, social organi organisms um, that have survived and 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 have survived through great great changes um, in 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 other genetic changes that are um, other animals uh, are kind of wiped out and altruism uh, altruism meaning thinking about doing something for the other is something that he's saying is inherent in human beings. And all we have to do is look at, you know, our monasteries, our religious institutions, um, whether or not you want to critique the, the, the corruption at the administrative and political level. Um, I know too many people who have been slaves and worker bees and worker ants and worker humans to um, their religious organizations. And those religious organizations are doing incredible generous work. So my, my sister-in-law, my wife's sister is, uh, you know, has been with a monastery for over 20 years in, uh, <clears throat> in, uh, different countries on the outskirts of Russia, originating in Russia, joining the um, Russian Orthodox monastery. Um, the, the, the nuns work a very, very hard, frugal, um, self-destructive, some would say, lives. But they're all, they're, they're doing it all altruistically for the benefit of the larger organism called the church and for the larger organism called society. Soldiers in the military, whether or not you believe in their missions, um, we, can, we can all debate 
whether or not the high level administrators and executives who make political decisions to send our young men and women overseas are wise, but that cannot at all interfere in the altruism that goes on and the heroism that goes on where these um, soldiers who dive on on grenades to protect their 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 um, their unit um, it, it's 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 completely aligned with other um, use social organ or organisms <coughs> So, um, let me just read an introduction here um, to Genesis. It says, Genesis is a beautifully clear account of a question that has lain unsolved at the core of biology ever since Darwin. How can natural selection produce individuals so altruistic that rather than breeding themselves, they help others to do so? For eons, humanity's greatest minds, philosophers, theologians, scientists have lacked confirmable answers to the questions that define and explain the meaning of human existence, what we are and what created us. What we are and what created us. And that's what, and that's what uh, the Silverback Principle is all about. It's, it's knowing who am I, why am I here, what is my purpose, where am I going and how am I going to get there? And in Wilson's work, it's, um, it's, it's looking at what we are and what created us. Now in understanding what we are and who we are and what created us, we understand who am I? And it's all part of, it's all part of know thyself. And again, we don't have to agree with everything that the biologist says, just as we don't have to agree with everything the priest says. But what we do have to do is reflect, contemplate, meditate, spend quiet time alone in places of nature where this intelligence, I believe, as I have experienced, awakens in us. And um, the, the conclusion, the conclusion of Wilson's, of Wilson's book is that, is that we're tribal. And the conclusion of a great many uh, anthropologists, archaeologists, sociologists, psychologists, sociobiologists, uh, is that human beings are tribal. And we, we can just as quickly join one group to slaughter another as we can join one group and rescue another. We have both the killer instinct to destroy that which is not us, or is not like us, or is not like us enough. And we have also this other phenomenal quality, which is that we can adopt others and bring them into our tribe. So <clears throat> if we look at if we look at tribal biology, if what what if we look at if we look at I remember I remember uh, um, studying sociology and, and learning that you know, there's, there's a maximum, there's a, there's a range, a mean about 25 people that we can have close and, in, you know, intimate in our, in our collective. And maybe the, the largest that that can expand, even though those others are not as close to us as our select 25, you know, is is you know maybe maybe a hundred people that 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 we can participate with and twenty five, including our parents, um, our friends, our coworkers, whoever it is that we are joining in to our particular tribe, and if we and if we could look at if we could look at nature, and human nature as tribal, and understand that these tribal divisions are, are fluid. They're fluid. 
So we can join a larger group. We can reduce and pull away from a larger group. We can include a few. We can exclude a few. Take... Now, the question, the questions, some of the questions that, that come up are, um, when you look at the state, when you look at the, the, the political state, when you look at something as large as a, as a country, um, you see that the United States for a long period of time has held to something called the Constitution and the Bill of Rights that bonded all of the tribe around certain ideas. And right now we're in a very polarized situation where this great tribe called the United States of America is being split open in the middle. And some, some say, okay, one side or the other is going to win. And, and, uh, and uh, if you take the long view of things, you, you will gain a deep, deep appreciation of what it has taken and what it will take to hold different tribes together. And Google is a tribe, it's a culture. Facebook is a tribe, it's a culture. Amazon is a tribe, it's a culture. And we're either a part of those or we're not a part of those. And right now we're, 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 we're having debates and arguments in courts and uh, in society with, uh, with whether or not uh, we want Google and Facebook to have that much power over the rest of the collective tribe. So, um, I like to bring it down to some basic units. Uh, my mentor and somebody that I, I deeply tip my hat to um, long after he's gone um, warned me long, long ago, 30 years ago, to draw a line in the sand. And on one side of that line was my wife and our family. And on the other side of the line was everybody else. And that line represented something very, very tribal. And it meant that my wife was the matriarch of this tribe. And I was the patriarch of this tribe. And we together were a couple, a unit, unbreakable. Now, that means if you don't like our rules, if you don't like what we eat, if you don't like the way we live our life, it might be best to stay on the other side of the line. Similarly, if you're interested in our life, in our lifestyle, in our food, in our social way of organizing our lives, then it, it may be that you, 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 you become part of our tribe. But the clarity there was the same kind of clarity when we look at the silverback and his little tribe. He probably has 15 to 50 little little silverbacks and little female silverbacks <laughs> who he's responsible for at any given time. And that's enough, and that's more than enough. And as long as you don't come and interfere with his territory, he's going to leave you alone. And he's not going to come and interfere with your territory. And that's something in which... I want everybody to think about when you're looking at political issues, when you're looking at education for your children, when you're looking at universities, when you're looking at joining political organizations, when you're looking at joining any kind of social organization. 
understand that your fluidity is moving in and out of tribal associations. And do you know your base? Do you know the who am I? What's my purpose? Where am I going? How am I going to get there? Do you know what we are and what created us? Namaste. Grrrr! <sighs>